I'm Michael Leonard and I'm an R&D engineer as a student placement at Aston Martin Formula 1 team. Oh, it, it's a dream come true really because growing up I always loved Formula 1 and it was always a dream to work eventually for a Formula 1 team and uh, to finally achieve that and be working for the team and be fully involved in it is it's just amazing. It's something that I've dreamed of since I was a kid and just yeah, you just keep working for it and it's the end goal in mind and then to finally get there, it's, uh, yeah, it feels good. You've got to keep working hard though to make sure it keeps, keeps happening. <laughs> well, when I was a bit younger, I, uh, I wanted to be a like, racing driver or whatever and um, I think when I was around 11, I kind of realised that I probably, probably haven't really been doing enough go-karting for that to even be a possibility yet. So uh, yeah, I kind of realised that that wasn't really going to happen. And then um, it was 2012 and I was watching a really tight championship battle between Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso. And uh, I remember the exact race it was, it was a Brazil race in uh, 2012 and uh, Sebastian Vettel fighting for the championship and I think it was like turn three, turn four, he gets hit and spins to the back of the field, he's got huge damage and you think it's all over and I remember the engineers telling him to drive close to the pit wall so they can get pictures and see what the damage is and see what changes they can make to mitigate that damage and I remember thinking that is awesome, I want to do that, I want to be working in Formula One and being able to understand the car so well to think right that's happened how can we mitigate it and um, yeah that at that moment uh, he went on and won the championship and it was all incredible and it's like you know what I'll do whatever it takes to make sure I can work for Formula One and make it basically and yeah I think yeah it sounds weird but I was only 12 but at that point I, I knew <laughs> I was looking at university courses <laughs> and things like that at the age of 12 just just really so I could know what I need to do at every step so I need to do this now so I can do these GCSEs and I need to get these in GCSEs so I need to do these A levels so I can do this uni course and then I can basically be on the right course to come on placement for a year 15 months which is where I am now. Okay, so um, if you're going down the engineering path, the, the most important thing is maths and physics, really. Um, particularly maths, it's, it's just you really, there's things that you might think, oh, I'm never going to use this in life, and you really are. Like, <laughs> you really are. Um, so yeah, I remember when back when I was in school, there was some people like, why would you need letters in maths? And it's like you grow up and it's mainly letters. <laughs> um, but so yeah, one thing I'd say, so like GCSEs, you don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, but at the same time, know in your mind that you really got to understand subjects because understanding is probably more important than anything else because that's what will carry you through. So there, there's some few, a few big things that stood out really and there's some courses that I did for the Small Peace Trust um, and they were residential courses and you went away for a week. I think one of them was at Coventry University, another one was at Oxford Brookes University and they were really cool, so you'd basically be given a design and build task all week, so you'd have a brief, and at the start of the week, you'd be like designing the, the vehicle, think about how it could work, and then by the end of the week, you've completely made it, and it's been put to the test. That was good, and then there's another one, um, the one that I did at Oxford Brooks. Um, we we're actually quite lucky to, um, go to the uh, Lotus F1 factory when it was Lotus 
as Alpine now. But yeah, back then it was Lotus and that was incredible. That was my first kind of experience of a Formula One factory. And I remember being shown around and thinking, wow, this is, this is special. Like this is really, I've, I've got to do anything it takes to be able to work in Formula One because uh, yeah, this is really special. And those really, I already had quite a lot of motivation to because I, it's all intrinsic and I really wanted to do it. But that was really a, a boost along the way. Um, and they taught me quite a lot as well. Um, so things that you wouldn't necessarily get in the classroom, which I think is often quite important. F1 school is something I really wanted to do and um, my school unfortunately didn't have the resources to do it and I, uh, <laughs> I actually, when I, was, when I was in school, I think, I think it was in year 8 or year 9, I'm, I'm not sure what age the F1 school is but uh, I remember going up to the head of IT in my school and basically organising a meeting with them and the deputy head asking look can we can we do F1 in schools can we do this kind of thing and yeah they really looked in with the physics teacher as well and we were really kind of looking and unfortunately in the end it wasn't possible but, um, so it's something I'd say to if, this, if you have the opportunity and this stands for anything whether it's F1 in schools or anything like that grab it because you just want to learn as much as you can um, and it'll, it'll help immeasurably, like just anything like that, grab it because not everyone has that opportunity to do those kind of things. Like I'm, I'm sure I'm definitely not the first, but I'm sure I'm definitely not the last either. Um, so yeah, like it's something I considered as well, it's sometimes I remember trying to apply for work experience placements at um, a couple of the Formula One teams and it was limited to the catchment area near their factory and I was thinking, oh, I'm at such a disadvantage here, but um, that passes and all of a sudden you, you kind of forget about that and yeah, you really, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter where you come from um, and I realise that now I'm working there, like there's it's an amazing place to work, there's so many people, it's so multicultural. Um, I mean, you sit in a canteen and there's like, sometimes there can be like two or three, four different languages you can hear. <laughs> it's uh, quite incredible really. Um, I have people from Spain, Italy, Japan, like, yeah, it's such a multicultural place. So really, it's, if you come from Anglesey, like, it's, it's no different than if you're in the centre of London. Um, just yeah, if you work hard and just do your best, I'm sure you'll you'll make it if you, if you want to. And I'm sure you can do everything you want to do, really. I go to Loughborough University, um, and I chose there because that's where I felt I fit. Um, I went to other places on open days and. On paper they looked amazing and yeah to be fair they were great places but when you find somewhere that you really feel like you fit that's the most important thing because in my case you can be spending five years of your life there so it, it's quite important that you, you're going to enjoy it <laughs> um, so yeah that's I, I chose it because there's a huge connection to sport and Everyone's just lovely there, and uh, everyone's grounded and things like that. So um, yeah, when one thing I'd say when you're choosing universities is make sure that it's somewhere that you are going to enjoy. Formula student is like a, a baby Formula One. <laughs> um, so yeah, the students from. Almost every university um, across at least at least Europe, um, but there's also worldwide teams as well. Um, design and build their own single-seater racing car to regulations, and then go and basically race it at events. And um, they're all across Europe, really, and 
this was some in America, but um, yeah, Silverstone, uh, once we, our, our team is competing in like Silverstone, Austria, Germany, um, all sorts really. And um, yeah, so with Formula Student, uh, some university is part of the course, so everyone has to do it. Whereas at, at Loughborough, it's all student run, student led, and if you want to do it, you go and do it. Yeah, if you if you're thinking about um, advice that you might want, um, it's definitely any opportunity, take them because, as I said, there it will always be worth it. And to, if you're working really hard on something, if it's if it's something that you enjoy doing, it's it's worth it. So um, <laughs> it's, it's a yeah if. Some people might say, um, why are you wasting so much of your time on former student? But uh, there's quite a funny quote that me and my friend used to say in school, the time you enjoy wasting isn't wasted time. Um, and it's definitely the case, like if, you're, if you've got an opportunity that's come your way, you should always feel so lucky to, to have that opportunity because in its purest form, like not everyone will have that. So you've really got to take that and embrace it and make the most out of everything because if you don't, then someone else will. And at the end of the day, you, you don't want to think, you don't want to be that guy who's gone, oh, I was, I could have gone with them, but I didn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, just in, Take every opportunity and make the most from it and just enjoy yourself the whole time. Don't take yourself too seriously at any point because at the end of the day, growing up, um, I, I, I still know very little compared to almost everybody I'm working with. <laughs> so if you take everything too seriously, then you're not going to learn. Um, You've got to take things. Se <laughs> yeah, you've got to take things seriously, um, but don't take yourself too seriously. Um, just enjoy things and make the most of every opportunity that comes your way. Really, and work hard. Work hard because it it pays off. I say the biggest thing with all of that in mind, and you kind of reminded me of that really is never give up because you only need one yes. Um, when I was in my first year of university I sent out emails to every team asking for if I could come and help them even make a cup of tea for someone and just try and see what it's like at a Formula 1 team and get as much experience as I could and um, every team said no and, or, or didn't reply or something like that and that's all right and you can't lose motivation you can't think oh that's it I'll give up um, so I went away and improved myself like uh, got more more to offer so to speak and yeah all, all the way through my school life I was kind of emailing teams asking for career advice and things like that and yeah just just don't give up because at the end of the day one day I walked out of an exam in my first year and I checked my emails and it was an email from Racing Point Formula 1 team and the head of HR had said, yeah, we like there, there could be a space for you for the next three months. Um, would you like to come for an interview? And at that point I thought, yes, this is this is the opportunity I need and you got to grab that. So. Um, it's quite funny at the time I, um, I I was actually turns out I was allergic to something that I didn't know I was allergic to <laughs> so I was having an absolutely massive allergic reaction driving down to this interview covered in rash <laughs> just, um, yeah, just putting all the cream on I could to try and keep it at bay um, itching so much and I remember pulling up to the factory gates and seeing the factory there and a big sign saying welcome to 
and Racing Point Formula One team. I was sitting down in that interview and thinking, this is this is my chance, this is my chance, and you've really got a, an opportunity like that. You've got to you've got to grab it because you can't let it slip away. Um, and yeah, I was fortunate enough that Racing Point so they took a huge chance on me, really, um, and that's something I'll just be forever grateful for because at the end of the day, I, I had very little to offer their team in terms of skill set or experience. <laughs> and they were kind enough to offer me huge experience to come to their team for a long period of time, three months, a full summer, um, and yeah, just learn so much. And I developed more as an engineer in those three months than I had done in the whole year previously at university. Incredible, it was like, I've all this hard work for the last however many years, I'm finally sat here. And um, obviously you like, deep down you always want more, but at that time I s sat there waiting for like, the person to come and give me my induction. And I thought, this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is enough. That died away as soon as I started wor working on things, it, you just want to really get stuck in. But uh, yeah, I was just so in awe about everything. Um, and yeah, you really just got to take those opportunities when they come along and you only need one yes. You really only need one yes. So at the minute here on placement, this is something that I've dreamed of effectively um, since I was, yeah, in 2012 watching that race and once I did my research and realised that I need to do these GCSEs, these A levels to go to university and and within university you'll have that one year and you'll try and find a placement that is effectively effectively your your chance at proving to that company that you're a worthwhile candidate um, for full time employment but also learn so much and this year placement is something that I've known would um, be a case but always dreamed and hoped that it would be with a Formula One team so to be able to be coming here with Aston Martin Formula One team and more, more importantly the Sebastian Vettel the driver that was my hero my idol growing up he's now just by pure chance <laughs> really um, just so happens to be at the Formula 1 team that I'm working for as well. That's such a, a bonus and it really is a dream come true to be honest because it's, a, it's something that for the best part of a decade I've always thought I really would love to work for a team that Sebastian Vettel is driving for. So uh, that is such a bonus and that in itself is a dream come true. And it's almost, uh, almost like that that moment when I first sat down in the Racing Point factory is, that's enough. <laughs> but it never is, you always want more and you always want to push yourself to the, the best you can be. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have those milestones. Um, but this, it, this feels like a, a huge one for me.